What's up, everybody? Go to Pitch Pop here. First off, let's talk about Vanderbilt at South Carolina, the number 13 Gamecocks. Nobody thought we had a shot at this at the beginning. Everybody was rightful for the, to believe that. We were down 28 to nothing right out the gate. Our defense looked like flat garbage. I was scared. I thought we were going to get routed and ran out of Columbia. We came back. The second half was really our half. We won the second half like 15-7 to 7 or something. Doesn't matter if we won the second half. We didn't win the game. Fourth quarter, you know, our defense finally got some stuff together, and they didn't run all over us after those four touchdowns unanswered. Like, it was just like child's play when they scored on us, it seemed like, right out of the gates. But uh, fourth quarter was our quarter. 15 to nothing in the fourth quarter is pretty much what we did. We scored two touchdowns, got a two-point conversion, and it really should have been three touchdowns that we should have scored. It should have been a 22-point quarter for us. I'll get more to that in a second. When we hit that two-point conversion and we're down 25 to 35, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. Like, I believed we could come back, but when we were just down by 10 points and after that two-point conversion – I believed with 11 minutes remaining on that clock, and don't tell me any South Carolina fan didn't believe it either, that this team, if we keep playing how we're playing, exact, we're going to win this game with 11 minutes remaining on the on the clock. And uh, we came real close to doing so. I think we punted it away or something. South Carolina muffed the ball or fumbled it or whatever. And we jumped on it. We pounced on it. We had good field position. We're wildcatting down the field. Wesley Tate's looking great. And it's like third and goal. We're inside the five, and we decide to pass it to a freshman wide receiver who is bound to make mistakes. He's a great talent, don't get me wrong. One of the top wide receivers coming into Vanderbilt in the country from recruiting. He's a great wide receiver, but he's a freshman, and he's bound to make mistakes. Third and goal, we decide to pass it. Oscar Samuels is a bad pass, but apparently the plan was to go straight to him. And just like that, picked off and ruined our chance on a third touchdown to make it a three-point game and a huge comeback. You know, it was already a huge comeback. But uh, a three-point game with, what, eight minutes or however many minutes, five minutes left on the clock, I don't know. That would have been awesome. But we threw a pick. Why, when we have Wesley Tate running up and down, running right down the field, down the Gamecocks' defense's throw, especially when we're running that Clowney. Clowney wants... More runs going his way. He's getting frustrated. Wesley Tate was running at that clowny. Why we didn't do Wildcat on third and goal when they proved they already couldn't stop it, I don't know. Or, heck, why didn't we get Jerron Seymour to go up the middle? I don't know. We threw an interception. James Franklin said it was a mismatch with Jordan Cunningham and that we thought it was going to be a touchdown, thought it was the right call. I'm the last person on planet Earth that's going to diss my coaching staff. I believe in James Franklin and the staff. I think they're the best staff in the country. But why we didn't Wildcat it right there? with Wesley Tate doing a phenomenal job with it, running all over, having a great fourth quarter. I don't know. Still bad. Still don't under. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It would have made it a three-point game, but still, who knows if that would have been enough. You know, clutch kicker and carry spear. You know, I, I wouldn't call him exactly clutch, but he's a good kicker, a good place kicker. So, anyway, we end up losing 35-25. to 25, And uh, eventually, when all James Franklin recruits get in here, this team, in about five years, is going to look scary, if not earlier than five years. And uh, if we keep pounding it and we keep getting these recruits coming in and filled up with recruits, three, four, heck, maybe a five-star prospect, these big upset wins are going to come close. They're going to come easy. Then moving on to Tucson Blue, 24-16, to 16, we come back. I don't have to explain it all. We come back after, you know, our defense looked pathetic out of the gates. Then we picked it up. Our defense looked awesome. We come back. We're up 24-16 on him. Matt Schaub threw his Gatorade cup. He can't believe it. Throw two interceptions. One took him back to the outside. Alcaron Vernon for a pick six. And what happened? Last drive of the game, we let him run it down the field. They hit the two-point conversion. Arian Foster is going to run it. How we don't know that, I don't know. I thought we would know that Arian Foster is going to run it on a two-point conversion when they're not far outside. We were around them, but the blocking was excellent. He got in, and then, thank God, he misses the field goal. You know, like, when it was a game-winning field goal, when they got the ball back, thank God he missed the field goal. 
two timeouts, icing the kicker. Didn't call the third one. Thank God Munchak made the right decision there. He missed the field goal. Then we go to overtime, and Texans win the toss, take it down the field, score a touchdown. And we lost the game that we should have won. We were the better team. Only thing that the Texans were better in were special teams that whole and throughout the whole game overall. The only thing that the Texans were better in was special teams with their punts because their punts send us down inside the 10 over and over. An MVP for the Texans would definitely be their punter. Stephen Rose, congratulations. Y'all aren't going to get to sleep over us. Two-tone blue is for real. We let y'all escape with one. So, uh, And also, congratulations to Cocky Swag and Garnet Army 1985 for your win over the black and gold. That's all I got to say. Quick video. I made a couple long videos, but after, you know, I kind of watched them, you know, half of them, I was thinking, that's kind of boring, so I'll just kind of try and make this as short as possible. So, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, Vanderbilt's got two easy games on the way. We're going up to UMass this Saturday, then UAB. Two games, two weeks away from conference play. For the black and gold Commodores, get our minds straight. Get ready for Missouri homecoming for the Commodores. And then the Titans are going to mess up the Chargers and then the Jets at home in the next two weeks. Thanks for watching. I'm out, guys. <laughs>